I wasn't sure what to say until this morning. Uh, I was told around, when, 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 when was I told that I'm going to, when, uh, I think around June or so, yeah, lo long ago, yeah, but I've been thinking about what I'm going to say, but until this morning there was nothing to say. It's called a preacher's block, or um, um, uh, I don't know, but where you just, there's no inspiration. And I was panicking this morning. And I paged through the program. Can I just have the program? Uh, I paged through the program, and uh, then I had an idea. Uh, <laughs> God is good. So I looked. I'm a preacher, so, but I knew I wasn't supposed to preach. So I, I looked through, and I saw, thank you for coming. And then I read, in everything give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I said, is this a theme or what? I said, well, we'll make it a theme. <laughs> so my eyes were glued to this um, inscription here, thank you for coming in everything, give thanks. So I thought I should talk about the beauty of being grateful. The joy of being grateful. The benefits of being grateful. So let's look at the first inscription there. Uh, thank you for coming. And I want to start right there and say thank you indeed for coming. Thank you. Thank you for coming. This would not be the same uh, if you were not here. Um, your presence cannot be taken for granted. We can't talk about the uh, importance of being grateful and not be grateful. So thank you for coming. Uh, I'm not going to say thank you for inviting me because <laughs> That's a responsibility. But thank you for, for, for coming. No one was forced to come here. We didn't even pay for you to come here. Actually, I'm told you will even pay for the meal. So you didn't come here because you're going to get a free meal. Um, but what you will get here, according to this program, is a warm appreciation. Now, talking about the warm appreciation reminds me of a pastor. I won't mention his name. He preached for the whole week in winter. It's very cold. Members don't tell you how the weather is where you come because they think you are in, con in contact with God. God will tell you how cold it is. So he went there with no warm clothes and he preached there for seven nights, sleeping alone and in the cold night, his family is out there. And people forget that, you know. They think you drop from heaven. I forget that you have a family, you've got kids. No, just oh, thank you, pastor. And at the end of the week, and as Adventists would do, we'll give you a gift. And um, you're not surprised, of course, with the gifts that we get. Um, and they gave him an electric blanket at the end of a cold week, so that when he goes to another area, at least he'll have a, an electric blanket. And he prayed and he says, I wish I got it on Monday, because I needed it during the week. Um, at least he got something warm, as a form of appreciation, and that's what you will get, warm appreciation. Uh, I've got cups there at home. Um, I also have a cup from Helderberg. I think I must have done, so I can't remember what, but I've got a cup. I've got a cup. Uh, and I've got ball pens, ball pen. Thank you, so warm appreciation for what you have done. And if you look at, I was telling some people, I said, do you know how long, how, how torturous it was for me to get here? I almost missed the plane. I had to run all the way and I had to do this and at the end of everything and not sleeping and preparing the sermon, get a nice map of Zambia. Put it on the wall. I was in Zambia. So the question is, why do we do that? Why do we go there? Why do we accept these uh, assignments to preach? Why do we do that? Uh, why are we here when nobody has paid for our tickets? And I want to tell you we're here because we're thankful. That's the reason, even when you want to say no, but when you are grateful, you become reckless. You become irresponsible. Even when the kids say, but daddy says, I have to go. You know, when you are grateful, you feel you owe, oh, you are indebted. I have got to do it. So it's not for the warm appreciation, it's not even for the warm cups or the warm whatever electric blanket but it is because we are grateful. We are here because we are grateful. We are thankful. Grateful to God for the experience we've had in this place at Helderberg. And here we are. 
Yes, we are thankful that our coming here is appreciated, but we are grateful. That's why we came. We didn't come so that you can thank us. We came because we are thankful. The Bible makes it very clear that it is the hand that gives that is blessed. Contrary, of course, to the notion of consumer and consumerism and consumption and eating and getting. We thank you, Helderberg, for affording us the opportunity to give in whatever way or form. We thank you because in doing so, you extended, you have extended our lives and have improved our health. Thank you for making us pay for our meal. To remind us that we have money so that we can be grateful for the resources we have. Thank you. I'm convinced that people are not dying so much of what is done to them, and there's a lot that is done to people. Um, there's a lot, we don't want to talk about that, we're here to celebrate, uh, especially in our country. But I want to say to you uh, that in most cases, it's not what people do to us, it's what we do to ourselves. Ungratefulness is a self-inflicted disease. It is a severe way of committing suicide. When you are ungrateful, you're killing yourself. I was listening to a documentary or something like an interview of Floyd Mayweather Jr. Maybe I picked it up, maybe it, listen, I didn't listen to the whole thing. Maybe he had said something before, but I'm just going to comment on what I heard. I know this thing is going to be on YouTube and you might even listen to it and call me and say, what did you say about me? Um, but uh, I want to put a disclaimer there. He's a good boxer. He has won all his fights, but I think he's losing a fight against ungratefulness. He made it very clear. He's made so much money, and he says, I'm running away from poverty. I don't want to be poor. I don't want my kids to be poor. And if you spend your life running away from poverty instead of helping those who are poor, then you are poor in your riches. And no one can help a rich, poor man. We just arrived uh, from St. Helena and just we landed in Johannesburg and uh, a person sitting next to me was with his wife. The wife didn't comment, so I take it that's the diet they eat at home. And he shouted in the whole plane, in, in, inside the plane. Everybody could hear that. And he said, now we are back in this country where we are going to be raped, killed, hijacked, um, this country full of crime. And everybody was shocked. Not because we don't believe that. But we're asking ourselves, do you really have to count your burdens and not your blessings? Aren't you thankful that you arrived safely in this country? Because you could have died on your way to this country. There are many ways and many things we can be thankful for. Yes, we have challenges. And I quote here, somebody says, it's understandable that in these dark, violent times, we may sometimes feel that we have less to be thankful for. But perhaps the reason why we feel that way is because we are not saying thank you enough. If you were to say thank you enough, it will help you not to feel that way. So the text says in everything, not in some, in everything, including those painful things, in everything. In every situation, in every circumstance, give thanks. This is an attitude. I give thanks. In other words, as one preacher says, even when you have just been robbed, give thanks that you are not the one who robbed. There's a story in the Bible in Luke chapter 17. You know the story better than I do, especially those who are graduating in theology. Ten lepers who were healed from leprosy. The Bible says only one returned. Only one was grateful. Only one. Have you not wondered? Is it not surprising that the, 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 the crowd, uh, uh, people who come to be thankful, are always in the minority? And Christ was shocked. And he says, didn't we heal ten? But where are the nine? Now, if he says that and is Christ, which means he expected at least the nine to come as well. But only one came and it was a foreigner. This is not about preaching. I'm not going to get into that story, but let's use it as a backdrop. 
And the Helderberg alumnus is not necessarily one, this is my own definition here, you don't have to use it, just for now. After I finish, you can destroy it. It's not one who has studied here at, 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 at Helderberg, but, but, but it's one who sees value uh, that Helderberg has played uh, in his life. Not necessarily because he was here. There are people who are blessed and yet they've never been here. Blessed by those who are here and for that reason they become alumni. They feel like we are, we are, we went through there because we've been blessed by those who went through there. And they want to contribute as well. Those who are thankful for such institutions. Those are part of us. And they say, I would have loved to have attended Helderbeck if I had an opportunity. But they sit there and they are our friends. They say, go for it, go for it. We want you to succeed. So let's tap into those also and bring them on board. Why do many find it difficult to return? Why do many find it difficult to come back and be thankful? And I'm saying through the 2019, some of you can't wait to leave the gates of this institution. It says, Lord, free, free at last. Thank God I'm free. <laughs> I know some of you thought things, maybe that was a waste of time. Why is it that few come back? Why do others feel like they will not come back? Now, if you read that story that I mentioned in Luke chapter 17, you will notice, and those who have done Greek, the Greek students here will agree with me, that the, Luke uses two words there. The, the, all of them were healed, but one was made whole. And the one who returned was made whole over and above being healed. But those who did not return were healed, but they were not made whole. And the problem that is faced, that we are facing in our country, is comes from people who are healed but are not whole. And people who have money but they have no responsibility. Partial blessings are dangerous because the other part that you don't have kills the one that you have. Partial blessings have a way of dehumanizing us. It would appear on the surface at least that those who return came back for more, or usually come back for more, to experience wholeness. While the rest run away with partial blessings, they come so that they can experience wholeness. Some of you may have reasons, and good reasons, that I had painful experience at Helderbeck, and I want to forget about Helderbeck as fast as I can. The years I spent, they were not good, that may be true, but so what? You have not discovered anything new. That's not a discovery that is worth noting. Helderberg never said it is a place where there are angels. This is not heaven. If somebody said this was heaven, sorry, this is not heaven. You're still going to heaven. This is not heaven. This is not an ice cream parlor. It is part of life. Herobek is right there in part of life. Is is it part of the sinful earth? Um, and some may say, I didn't even want to come to Herobek, but my sponsors forced me to come here. They had, I had no other option. I had to come here. If I didn't, I would have lost my sponsorship. Life was hard there. We starved. We worked hard. We suffered. Well, that's life. You must be thankful that you came to a place like that. At least you know there's a place like that. <laughs> that has increased your vocabulary and your experience. Now you know. Now you'll be, you'll be able to be thankful for other places that are not like this one. Be thankful. Do you know, do you know that those who went to Robben Island, it was a bad place, but they go back. Just to go and sit in that cell again and smell the atmosphere and, and suck in the atmosphere. It brings wholeness, it brings healing. I grew up in a, in a place called Matata. It was tough, it was tough. I thought um, uh, in my dreams when I have a nightmare, I will dream I was there and, I say, <gasps> and then I wake up and say, thank God I'm not there. But, but I've done, what I've done deliberately, I go back with my wife and my kids. I said, I grew up here and I sit there and I look back and I say, thank God. I needed that. 
And some of you, if, if life was hard here, you needed that. It has helped you. Maybe you'd be drinking alcohol and using drugs. It helped you to come back to your senses. Thank God for that. And you will realize it one of these days. So you come back to remember the lessons you learned while you are watching and opening the gate there. The lessons you learned. And some of us could only learn those lessons right there at the gate. Nowhere else. If Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness, you think that was a joke? It helped him for the next 40 years. Thank God even for the difficulties. And so we expect you when you leave this place to make sure this place continues to exist. To give pain to others as well. Now, some of us may say, why should I be thankful for, for Helderbeck? Because I paid for my education, I paid for my tuition. My parents worked hard, they sacrificed. Helderbeck must thank me, because through me they were able to budget, to balance their budget. But even so, you've got to be thankful that you had the money to pay for a tuition. Thankful that you chose to pay that money here. And some people use, use the money you had, they use it to buy drugs, but at least you use it to buy an expensive education. And thank God for that. You should be grateful. Thank God that Helberg was an option for you to spend your money on. So, make it your responsibility to make sure it continues to exist. So that others like you, like you who have money, who, who have money, will be able to come. Because one day you'll have so much money, but there'll be no held back. We are here because we are grateful, beloved. I'm just going to run quickly now, increase my pace. We are here because we are grateful. Of course, some could not make it. When I say here, I mean everywhere. They are here, they are here. Because as long as you have held back in your mind, you are here. Because you want to know what is happening at home because you are here. What's the enrollment? They said because you are here. So let me just quickly share with you why you should celebrate being grateful. Why you should be thankful for being grateful. You see, this is this is it. That Lord, I'm thankful that I'm grateful. Mind Valley Academy, in, you know, I think it's in the US, have done a serious research on gratefulness and they list the following as the benefits in general. That gratitude is good for your brains. So acts of kindness and feelings of gratitude flood our brains with dopamine. And when you are truly grateful for something or for someone, your brain rewards us by giving us a natural high. When you are so that's why we keep coming. Even when we get cups, you keep coming because there's a natural high by being thankful. Some get it from drugs, but others get it from preaching a sermon. They get the same thing, natural high, but without losing their lives. <laughs> and so my son asked me one day, Daddy, why do you make noise when you preach once in a while you make noise? And I tell him, because I'm naturally high. <laughs> Count your blessings and not your burdens. And when you do that, it being grateful decreases your pain levels. It reduces stress and protects against depression. It leads to better sleep and increases energy and vitality. Those who are thankful live long. But for me, beloved, I think being grateful improves one's emotional intelligence as well as his, uh, as well as his or her spiritual intelligence. Let me just work on those two quickly. We know, uh, we know now from evidence-based research that EQ is a, is a predictor for success and happiness in life. That, that uh, happiness and success are, are closely associated with EQ than with IQ. Well, IQ may open the door by EQ, but with EQ you climb the stairs. <laughs> It is those who know themselves and those who can relate to others who become leaders in enterprise. And the issue is not so much about thinking, it is how we think, 
It is thinking about thinking. It is thinking about our emotions. As, as Neil Nedley would say, it is, it, is, it is engaging in straight thinking. And gratefulness is being, is when you are grateful, you are practicing to be a straight thinker, not a crooked thinker. You see, when you are grateful, you, you, you prevent the amygdala hijack, as, as, as Goldman would say, uh, that, that this, the amygdala would, should not hijack your, your reasoning powers. Your, the emotions must not take control of your reasoning. You can only do that, in most cases, when you are grateful. When you are grateful, you become deliberate that I refuse to let my circumstance tell me how, whether I should sing or not. I will sing even though I'm, a, I'm in a cage. I'm in a cage. I will sing even though things are not well. Why? Because I chose to do that. Uh, I, I, I refuse to let my feelings tell me which songs I will sing. As a man thinketh, so is he. So when we are grateful, we seek to change our thoughts so we can change our behavior. Being grateful is a deliberate way of changing how we feel. You just look for reasons why you should be grateful and before long, you'll be, you'll be happy. Now, I know it is, it is as, a, as a matter of fact, as I've indicated, it is, it is very difficult to be grateful and depressed at the same time. Look at, look at people who are depressed. There's nothing wonderful. Everybody hates them. The whole world wants to kill them as if they are that important. They all want to kill them. They don't even know you exist. Okay. But, but people who are depressed, afraid of living, they don't see any good thing in life. Life is so unfair. Who said life is fair? Some, one day we'll talk about that. This entitlement mentality, that the whole, whole world must dance around you in everything, give thanks. If you get home without an accident, give thanks. If you get home with an accident, give thanks so that you can know that yesterday it could have happened but it didn't happen, so give thanks. You are here, you are here, beloved, I can tell you. You are here because you have made it your habit to be grateful. That's why you are here. You have made it your a habit to be grateful. You are responsible for your own happiness. Don't outsource your happiness. Don't make people responsible for happiness. Hey, he made me sad. But do you expect people to make you happy, including your wife and your husband? What will you do when they die? They have a tendency to die, by the way. So you're going to be miserable. No, I'm, I know it's, it's, it's not good, but I mean, honestly. You cannot attend the alumni convocation and commit suicide the following day. Never. Because there's so much to be done here. Why do you kill yourself? They showed you here in one page the things that, uh, the projects they have. Now you want, you want to go commit suicide? There's, they want to build new uh, men's rails. And what are you doing with the rope? Go get money and build. Yes, things have happened that are hurting, but when you are grateful, who cares? Grateful people are resilient. They refuse to give up. Being grateful, lastly, can also be associated with spiritual intelligence. And recent studies also done by Hartmuth are showing that there is more to heart than just the pumping of the blood. The heart is now recognized as a second brain. There is constant communication, not only from the brain to the heart, but also from the heart to the brain. When the heart is grateful, it communicates to the brain to find reasons for being grateful. And it influences it to reflect on life's happenings with the view of extracting blessings, even in the most unlikely situations. In everything, give thanks. It is all about coherence between the heart and the mind. So we say at Helderbeck, we educate the heart and the head so that there's that psycho psychophysiological coherence between the head and the heart. Thankful heart leads to a restful mind. Being grateful is in essence learning to speak from the heart. When you speak from the heart, you are more genuine. And I wish, talking to our theology students, you can learn to preach from the heart. Try to learn to preach from the heart. I think there's too much head in our preaching. And you can see the preacher himself is struggling because this thing is too much in the head. Even the members are struggling themselves. It's too much in the head. Relax. Let it flow. And speak from the heart. And when you do so, you can be genuine. You can be yourself. And it's not a nice thing to be yourself at times, but that's the best thing you can be. People who are grateful are indebted to their community. And being grateful heightens the appetite for service. 
It is difficult to serve without being grateful. Yes, you can work, but to serve is not possible. Ingredients for good service is wisdom, love, and compassion. And those things reside in the heart. Love is not in the head, it's in the heart. When we say people are heartless, we don't mean they are mindless. We mean they are heartless, they have no love. They may have PhD, but they are heartless because they have no sympathy, no love, no compassion. We don't want to have graduates here who have big heads and no heart. We are ungrateful. Timothy lists ungratefulness as a sign and a sin of the end in the last days. When we are grateful, we are protected from idolatry. Gratefulness channels our worship in the direction of the giver and not the gift. Now I end with the story that you all know. You remember the story, no preachers tell this story, I don't know where it comes, but I heard it also so you know. There's no reference, but that story is uh, a young professional orator and an old uh, experienced um, preacher um, there to recite Psalms 23. And at the end, the young orator received a standing ovation and a thunderous applause while the old man was greeted with sobbing and teary eyes of heartfelt experience. So the question was asked, why the difference? And the answer is, it became very clear that the young man knew the psalm of the shepherd, but the old man knew the shepherd of the psalm. Allow me to say, that the young man did everything, everything to get the applause, to display his oratory skills, so he can be thanked for his presentation and exceptional skill. But the old man spoke from the heart, from a grateful heart, not just to inform, but to bring transformation. Let gratefulness be your lifestyle. Grateful people make a difference. And so, we don't need excuses to add more kindness to the world. But the fact that gratitude is healthy is definitely something in, it, in itself to be thankful for. So we are grateful that gratitude has such benefits. So let us be intentional about being grateful and thank God for gratitude by being grateful. So thank you, President. Thank you, um, officers for thanking us, but we want you to know that we are here because we are thankful. God bless you.